I'm here at Max Souvenir and the lady permitted me to film with the nice background pictures and I'm with Father, what's your name? Fitzpatrick, Father where John. You, yeah, Father John, where are you from? From Ireland. First time here for you or? Oh, I'm here about uh, 25 times I would say. 25 times? I would think so, yeah. Why do you come back all the time? Uh, it's very attractive. Yeah. Uh, from a point of view, uh, just a priest, uh, it's a great affirmation. Mm -hmm. For a priest, it's great affirmation for the people. It's great formation for the people. Mm -hmm. It's very good teaching here mm -hmm. in the church from all the priests, and we meet priests from all over the world, and they give their testimonies, mm -hmm. and it's uh, very enriching. Mm -hmm. uh, good solid teaching, which you mightn't get at home in our own parishes. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I just like it. I like it. It's very peaceful. It's I always get something special when I come here. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I love coming here. How is it for you as a priest? Do you receive special graces as well? Well, I do, I do, and I suppose we can never presume to have a grace, but um, things always come your way. Mm -hmm. I find that when I walk down the street, uh, I will meet people, and they stop for a chat, and uh, some people will ask, can they go to confession? Uh, more people will ask, can we have a blessing for our family? Uh, more people will say, nice to see you, Father, we met you here last year, mm -hmm. and uh, we can renew acquaintances, so, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, very yeah, positive. Really do you have a favourite spot in Medjugorje? My favourite spot? I suppose my favourite spot uh, of all the things is the holy hour. Mm -hmm. After In the afternoon from 2 to 4, uh, if I'm free, any time I pop over at 2, spend my hour there. And, at the Adoration uh, Chapel? At the Adoration Chapel, yes, mm -hmm. that's right. And uh, you see so many people coming in, young and old, every age. Um, after that then, I suppose, the Blue Cross, Apparition Hill, uh, the Cross Mountain, and then even the walks through the, the, the fields are lovely, through the vines and through all the farm, you know, the, all the, the, the produce, the potatoes, mm -hmm. all the different things growing in the field. So it's very close to nature. And I find the, the people are very, very friendly as well. The people who uh, remind me a bit of Ireland uh, years ago when we were very poor. People are not so poor now, but they were in the beginning, they were very poor, but they still have um, something very nice inside them. They have time for other people. Uh, they make people feel welcome, which is what Our Lady wants, if people feel welcome. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, li I like it now, yeah. And, you know, confession is very central here in Medjugorje. You are a priest. There are a lot of people out there, maybe they are scared to go to confession to tell really what happened to them, what they did, you know. Yes. What give you, would you give them as advice not to be scared and what is the beauty of confession? Yeah, well, it's really, you know, the priest is there, okay, but you're really talking to Jesus and um, Jesus forgives, uh, Jesus came to be merciful. When he was in the world here, the, the, the Jewish authorities were very, very strict with the Jewish people and poor people fell by the wayside and they felt discriminated against, but he picked them up, he picked up those people. Anybody who's broken or some, a story behind them or a lady in trouble or maybe Mary Magdalene who had five husbands, um, Jesus picked them up and he made them whole again. That's what confession does. It's brings people together, it puts people together. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it's really what holiness is, is about, being all together, and that's what it is. I've met people on the street, mm -hmm. and uh, this lady said to me, my husband is very shy about going to confession. Mm -hmm. Will you hear his confession? I said, certainly. So I've heard many confessions on the street as well, so. That yeah. is the beauty of Medjugorje. I did the same thing when I talked to a priest on the street, and it's yeah. available, and it's simple. Yeah. You know? Very simple, yeah, yeah, so. No. And, and for you, you, you are wearing Marian, you pray the rosary often? I do, yeah. What is the beauty for you about the rosary? Um, well, I don't know, Father Leon here. Um, wonderful priest. I would have, yeah, wonderful priest, uh, very good priest. Uh, I would have said the rosary maybe once a day, but last time we were here, last May, mm -hmm. he said to, to us that we could say the rosary three times a day. Mm -hmm. So since I've gone home to Ireland, I've started saying the rosary three times a day. If I, when I can fit it in. But uh, the rosary is a lovely meditation, very peaceful, very relaxing. Uh, people think maybe it's, it's, it's boring to say one Hail Mary after another, but it's not boring. It brings peace, because uh, it's Our Lady's Prayer. It brings peace to your heart. And, um, no, it's lovely, lovely prayer. Lovely prayer. You know, there are a lot of people here in Medjugorje that look for their vocation. What would you tell them as a priest? How do they find the vocation to be consecrated, maybe to be a priest and then father of a family, mother of a family? What would you tell them how to find that vocation? Well, I would say, you know, if you say your prayers, uh, then God will whisper in your ear. You'll get a whisper in your ear of what God wants you to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, you're, if you're praying, that will come. 
and it won't go away, it'll stay with you. Um, I was a mechanic for nine years, mm -hmm. I worked as a mechanic and uh, I would have been regular with Mass and Confession and I think it was about 23 when I heard Jesus or somebody saying to me, or God saying to me, um, maybe you could be a priest. I was very impressed at that time with Pope John the 23rd and a local priest in my parish who gave a nice sermon. Mm -hmm. And uh, so God will whisper if you're praying mm -hmm. and you listen and take on board what God says. God will whisper in your ear what he wants you to do, whether it's be a priest, be married, be a nun, mm -hmm. be a brother, be whatever, yeah. Uh, God is there. We have to listen. Absolutely. Good at listening. Two Maybe ears. There is the, the holy hour. Adoration is very good for that. The silence of adoration. The silence of adoration. Christ. That's right, yeah. And you might feel you're bored, but if you just sit there, mm -hmm. be patient, something will come. So you just give God time and be patient with yourself. Yes. Uh, something will happen. Yeah, exactly. And um, I see you have that direct relationship with Christ. I can see it in your eyes. They say here, you can see Our Lady in the eyes of the people. This gentleness, this kind eyes. How can people have this relationship, this personal relationship with Christ? How they hear? How would you tell me? How do I hear that whisper? I'm yeah, well, now it's, listening. yeah, it's spending time again. It's spending time with Jesus. Uh, whether it's you know reading the scripture. Yes. Uh, you know, reading the scripture, um, you know, reading Romans, reading the Acts of the Apostles, it's full of the early church. Um, somebody said, a priest in America said that there are 28 chapters, I think, in the Acts, and that we are actually the 29th chapter. The present day is the 29th chapter, and the church active in today's world. So, um, yeah, if we listen. God is, God is speaking all the time. And step by step you will discern it's a gentle voice which gives you peace It's very gentle. Joy, you know? Yeah, you'll no feel happy. No agitation with God. You no, no, sure you'll feel happy. Agitated. Yeah. You'll feel happy about it, yeah. yeah. And you have a favourite saint, Father? Uh, I have lots of favourite saints. One is, one is popping up right now. I suppose my, my main one would be St. Benedict. Why St. Benedict? Well, he's a lovely story. Yeah. Because Benedict came to Rome as a young man with his sister Scholastica. To study literature, he came from a wealthy family and uh, he found society in Rome so upsetting. Mm -hmm. uh, rampant sexuality, mm -hmm. blood flowing, people being murdered. Um, so he had to escape from the city mm -hmm. and he went to live in a cave, mm -hmm. a place called Subiaco. Mm -hmm. And he spent three years in the cave mm -hmm. praying and meditating. And there's a saint called Romanus who lived near him, mm -hmm. who used to lower him some food every day in a basket. Wow. Uh -huh. Yes, and uh, so he uh, looked after him and um, Benedict became very famous then because there were lots of people like himself who were dissatisfied with society living in different locations, mm -hmm. uh, different monks and uh, they came to him and they said to him, will you be our leader? And he said, okay. So he got them all in together and he made his rule, mm -hmm. but his rule was very, very strict mm -hmm. and so <laughs> At first it didn't work out very well. Mm -hmm. In fact, someone tried to poison him. Mm -hmm. He had uh, Someone put a, a cup of poison on his table and a rook flew in and knocked it over so he didn't drink the poison. So when he saw that then, he said, maybe I am too strict. So he disbanded his first monastery mm -hmm. and then he began again uh, with a different rule, uh, a rule that would accommodate people's faults mm -hmm. and give them a chance to improve. Uh, and this became a famous worldwide rule. The Benedictine rule became famous oh, all over I the world. Love, uh, yeah, and I was trained by them. I went to school, Benedictine school. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. School, yep. So he founded his famous monastery then in Monte Cassino. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, and uh, and then actually, what Benedict really did was, when people saw Benedict and the monks living together and working together, mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of disturbance in the world at the time, and they said, if Benedict can do it and his monks, then we can do it too. So he he, was, he actually. It was the start of civilization. He brought civilization back to Europe. And that's why Pope Benedict took the name of Benedict to point us back to St. Benedict and what he did and what he can do today. Yes. It's so beautiful, Father. Good. And for our Protestant friends. Sorry? Uh, and for our Protestant friends, the favorite Bible scripture. You've got a favorite Bible scripture? Eh, uh, my favorite Bible scripture. Oh, I have one, yeah, it's in the Psalms. Um, it is in. Um, the rocks will melt like rack, wax, wax before the Lord of all the earth. So no matter what problem you have, if you bring it to the Lord, it will melt. I've given that to several people, people who go into hospital and people going different with big problems. 
uh, and it helps. So that's my favourite scripture. There are a lot of problems out there. Yeah. Oh yeah. So okay. the rocks will melt like wax before the Lord of all the earth. That's so my favourite. Yeah, you yeah. experience it yourself? Well, yes. Uh, yeah, you would. You would. Well, like uh, <laughs> when you're the parish priest, you have many problems. So you yes. know things to deal with and things say this is impossible to deal with this or deal with this. Mm -hmm. And then what I do then is says, look at Jesus. You know the solution. I don't, but just please tell me. Beautiful. And at yeah. the end, you know, I want to urge all people listening. We have to pray against for our priests. You know, we all forgot it, and we have to pray. You know, also for politicians. We always judge the priests, the politicians. Don't look at the news. Pray for them, and we have a better world. I think. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And Father, what would you tell at the end? Why come to Medjugorje? What would you tell people? I come to Medjugorje. Yeah. Well, obviously, I suppose the first reason is that Our Lady is here mm -hmm. and she's appearing on a daily basis. And um, the second thing is there is a great peace here. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all in the one hymn sheet. It's not like home. We don't hear getting bad news on the television because we don't have a television on in the room. Yep, there's no television. So, right. so yeah. it's all good. It's all good news here. It's yeah. all about um, uh, about the literally the good news of Christ. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, my, a friend of mine gave a homily one time and he said that um, this man came home from work one evening and he was very tired mm -hmm. and he wanted to read the paper. Mm -hmm. He took out his newspaper but his little son was beside him and he kept asking him questions, daddy, daddy, daddy. Mm -hmm. So the father got a scissors and he cut, there's a map of the world in the paper, he cut it out mm -hmm. and he cut it into five or six different pieces, mm -hmm. gave it to his little son and he said, now put that together son. And uh, the father thought he would get 10 or 20 minutes for himself to read the paper. But the son was back in two minutes. And he said, he said to his son, how did you do that? Daddy, he says, there was a picture of a man on the back of the, of the world. And when I put the man together, the world was together too. So that's what Medjugorje does. It puts people together. Amen. And then it that brings the world back together. So. Amen. This is a place of not division. It's a place of peace, and we need peace in that world. We do, we do. Now, yeah? we do, we do. Yeah, sure. And Father, can you give at the end a blessing for the people who watch this video now? Sure. Ask Almighty God to send His Holy Spirit upon everybody, and bless them all. Send His Spirit of peace, consolation, upon the whole world and everybody who is watching. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Thank God bless you, everybody. Father. You're welcome.